Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson. This is Business One, and we are now on Chapter 9, Production Operations Management. Uh, very important all throughout uh, service and manufacturing and production industries. <clears throat> Our learning objectives for the chapter are describe the current state of the US, U.S. United States manufacturing and what manufacturers have done to become more competitive. Describe the evolution from production to operations management. Identify various production processes and describe techniques that improve productivity. Describe operations management planning issues including facility location and facility layout and explain the use of PERT and Gantt charts, uh, very useful, especially if you're someone who does project management, you're already very familiar uh, with those two charts. Uh, getting to know uh, Shahid Khan, I want you to uh, check this uh, story out as usual. Always have the great stories about, uh, you know, very interesting individuals at the very beginning of the, of the chapter. Lost my arrow for a second. Also go over name that company, uh, see if you can guess who it is or uh, remember uh, to think about who it might be as you go throughout the uh, throughout the chapter. Um, Volkswagen, so you talk about manufacturing and assembly lines and things like that, and obviously uh, cars come to mind. Uh, Volkswagen is just one of the many auto manufacturers that have insourced jobs to the United States. So, you know, they talk all about outsourcing jobs. We're sending jobs to, you know, overseas, uh, to China, to Japan, uh, but now they're all insourcing jobs, and some of those jobs are coming back to the United States. Um, uh, and one in the one VW in a Chattanooga, Tennessee plant. <clears throat> Why do you suppose uh, many news reports emphasize outsourcing when thousands of jobs are created by insourcing? Well, let's just think about this uh, in terms of insourcing. Uh, if if in this IKEA plant, I believe it's in Georgia. Uh, if a Kia plant goes to Georgia, right? They're a Korean company, I believe. And uh, they put a plant in Georgia and they're making cars. Now, everybody there is probably going to purchase a Kia because you get a good discount. And their family and friends are probably also going to uh, purchase Kias as well. So, you know, although they are making the cars in the United States uh, for a Korean company, it still is widespread because people are buying the cars, they're referring the cars, and uh, it gets them a good uh, stronghold on, on the market. Uh, maybe they didn't go in with that intention, but uh, that's how I see it as far as that play goes in, in the end sourcing uh, your own farm in a box I uh, want you guys to check that out uh, talk about s some sustainability and uh, some great ideas that are very uh, although that's a box outside of the box uh, re reaching uh, beyond our borders also very important uh, because you want to understand uh, global you know understand domestic uh, business but you also want to understand uh, things from a global perspective as well uh, manufacturers and service organizations become more competitive. How are they and why are they more competitive? Well, because it's it's more competition out there uh, and some companies are going to find that competitive advantage and and then you have to find that same kind of competitive advantage and even better. Uh, so <clears throat> how can U.S. manufacturers and service organizations maintain a competitive edge? Well, let's see how. Uh, focusing more on customers. So we talk about mass customization, making things exactly how you want them. Maintaining closer relationships with suppliers and other companies to satisfy customer needs. Maybe moving really close to your supplier uh, or maybe even next door so that you can get the whatever goods you need in order to create your final product. Uh, practicing continuous improvement. Always, It's always a better way. We're always looking for the, what you call the second right answer. Answer, not just the first right answer we're looking for the second right answer that may be even better than the first right answer focus on quality we don't want to produce uh, shoddy products and we don't want uh, terrible service we want top-notch all along the way uh, saving on cost through site uh, selection right so maybe uh, I'm gonna save on shipping costs because I'm gonna move my business right next door to the people that ship the most raw materials to my company uh, relying on the internet to unite companies that work together and adopting production techniques such as enterprise resource planning. And so enterprise resource planning, I'll tell you right now, uh, it's not uh, for all companies. It's only for the companies that are a little bit, uh, uh, not a little bit, but much, much bigger. Uh, because you don't want to pay $10 million for a system that does everything if you can do your accounting at QuickBooks. Uh, so production. It's the creation of finished goods and services using the factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, this is how you produce things, this is how you create goods that are to be sold. Uh, production management has described the management activities that help firms co uh, create the good, right? So this is just the management of that function. And operations management, which is typically deemed for, you know, for the service, uh, for the service industry. 
uh, is a specialized area of management that converts or transforms resources, including human resources, I mean people working there, uh, <clears throat> like um, technical skills and innovation into goods and services, right? The goods that we provide as a, as a company, uh, such as my company. Uh, test prep, remember to go over all the test prep uh, so that you are prepped and ready to go for all of the uh, test and quiz quizzes that we may have. Now, form utility is very, very important, so don't just uh, glean over this one or skip over it. It's the value of producers add to materials in the creation of finished goods and services. Uh, so, we have, but we have to go a little bit further into it. So, form utility can exist at a retail level as well. For example, a butcher can produce a specific cut of beef from a whole cow, or a baker can make a specific type of cake uh, from basic ingredients, right? Uh, so, <clears throat> If you look back uh, here it, it, and you just look on this portion, it's not going to give you the full uh, uh, the full uh, gamut of, of what form utility is. So let's look at it on here. So the value producers add to materials in the creation of finished goods and services, such as by transforming silicon into computer chips and putting services together uh, to create a vacation package. So uh, the silicon, the little Intel Pentium chip, it means absolutely nothing. If it's just by itself, it does nothing for you. But when you put it in a computer, right, it makes the processing a lot faster. It makes it great. Uh, bundling things such as a vacation package, right? So we're going to have your food covered, your hotel covered, your uh, flight arrangement covered. Bundling these things, maybe even if I pay a few extra hundred dollars, it's still okay because I'm at a one-stop shop and I'm getting everything completed there. Uh, different types of manufacturing we need to go over, uh, process manufacturing, uh, physically or chemically changing materials, right? So you actually change something. Uh, for example, uh, boiling uh, physically changes an egg, right? So you have an egg, you boil it, it changes into something else. Uh, the assembly process puts together components, so eggs, toast, and coffee, that makes your breakfast uh, to make a product, which is breakfast. Uh, continuous process is one uh, in which uh, long production runs turn out finished goods over time. Uh, as a chef, you uh, could uh, have a conveyor belt that continuously lowers eggs into boiling water for three minutes and then lifts them out, right? It's in, ingenious. Uh, so if you look down here at our inputs, production, and our outputs, uh, so our inputs, land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and knowledge, right? So those are labors of, of, of you know, our, our um, not our labors of, uh, but our factors of production. Uh, production control, planning, routing, scheduling, dispatching, follow-up leads to our outputs, which are goods, services, and ideas, right? Typically goods, tangible, you could touch, services. Can't touch them, but uh, you can tell that something was done, such as me cleaning your carpet and ideas, uh, good, great ideas to, uh, uh, to implement within a company. So intermittent process, a uh, production process in which the production run is short and the machines are changed frequently to make different products. So short production run, now we have to change the configuration of the machine to do something else because we're no longer uh, uh, satisfying the need or the want or the requirement or quest for whatever product we were prior work, working on prior. Uh, computer aided design, something that's, you know, great, uh, you know, some, if you, you know, if you're artistically, uh, inclined, uh, or some, sometimes if, even if you're not, but typically when you're artistically inclined, you can do these computer aided designs and graphing and things, uh, that can lead to a great career. Uh, so computer aided design is, uh, the use of computers in designing of products, uh, computer aided manufacturing, uh, is the use of computers in the manufacturing of products, right? So I'm just running computer, running the machine, and it's, uh, putting the doors on the Chevrolets. <clears throat> Uh, flexible manufacturing uh, means designing machines to do multiple tasks so they can produce a variety of products, right? So if I have a company, let's say I, yeah, I bought a, a machine from Bowflex, right? And they make different machines, right? So their, their machine, I got the Max Trainer. So the Max Trainer, let's say we have a place, a plant that makes all the machines. We have them to make them the Max Trainer, but then we also have them uh, to make the Airdyne bike that they create, right? So we have to be able to shift and, and translate things on this machine to produce something else because uh, the Max Trainer, let's say, is the latest and greatest of this week, but now it's gone and nobody else wants it. Now we're moving on to producing something else. Uh, lean manufacturing is a production of goods using less of everything than in mass production, right? So we want to use less because we want to, you know, work on our sustainability and be environmentally friendly. Uh, so here are some of the characteristics of lean companies. Uh, they take half the human effort. They have half of the defects in the finished products or service. They require one third of the engineering effort. 
They use half the floor space and for the same output, and they carry 90% less inventory, right? So uh, it's really tough to, to get to that point, but it is it is possible. Uh, companies have, and even companies that are on the way towards moving towards that point, they are still doing quite well. Mass customization, that's great. May not sound exactly what it is, but that means like I'm going, there's a video on our, you know, modules about this. I'm going to produce something to your specifications, right? So, uh, it, you know, my kids, they run track and now Nike has these things where you can put your name on the back of your shoes. You know, you can, uh, bedazzle them and get colored spikes and stuff like that, right? So now you got purple spikes on the bottom of your shoes, you know, to make them look great. So this, that's mass customization. So it's, uh, tailoring products to meet the needs of individuals, uh, of individual customers, right? So we're looking at individual, uh, people. And, and the satisfying their needs as opposed to saying, Hey, these are the Nikes. This is what you're going to get. Enjoy them. Some of you guys are going to like them and buy them. Some of you guys are not and you're going to stay away from them. And we're okay with that. We're fine with that. Uh, but you know, some companies are looking for, we don't want to lose any sales. We want to mass customize and do exactly what you say. <clears throat> so not only can you customize the colors of your M&Ms, you can also have personal messages and or images imprinted on them. Uh, what other customized products can you think of, right? So think about customized products that you, you know of or are familiar with. <clears throat> uh -oh. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to move the frame on you. So make your own kind of music. Be sure to read that spotlight on small business. Uh, a lot of, you know, individuals, a lot of talent going to small business relative to music. Uh, be sure to go over your test prep. Uh, you will have a, a upcoming test, uh, but that test will be on uh, just on the chapters uh, five through eight. Uh, this chapter nine is not included on that test. So just be ready for that. Uh, facility location, right? You have to have a locale. Uh, the pro the process of selecting a geographic location for his company's operations, right? Uh, is it close to the the where the president, vice president, and director live, right? They live in Paramount, so we're going to put the company right here in Paramount or possibly Compton, uh, because our location is very very important, and they will be there uh, the latest. So you know they say, hey, let's this is where we want to put in. Plus, they're the ones making the decision, so it makes it a lot easier for them. <clears throat> so facility location is a major decision for manufacturing and other companies. The decision involves taking into account availability of qualified workers, access to suppliers, uh, customers and transportation and local regulations, including zoning and taxing. Uh, how has growth of uh, commerce on the Internet affected company location and decision? Well, it's affected, meaning that I can get some of the things that I need, but I do not have to get in a car or get on an airplane and travel to try and do so. <clears throat> uh, making ethical decisions do we stay or do we go right it's funny it's a commercial on right that uh, you know that that's on right now says do i stay or do i go uh and it's singing a song and the guy's like yeah this guy doesn't sound like i'm gonna make the sale but there's a possibility i make may make the sale do i stay or or do i go right so you always have to make those most ethical uh decisions <clears throat> Uh, telecommuting, I talked to you guys about telecommuting before. I have about half of my staff that telecommutes or works from home. Uh, so working from home via the computer, uh, you know, just it's, it's very commonplace in, in today's society. Uh, some individuals and some companies just don't do it. A uh, facility layout is a physical arrangement of resources, including people in the production process, right? So where is everybody sitting? Uh, where are they standing? Where are they working? All of those things. <clears throat> so, uh, you have to have to remember that, uh, you know, for, for facility, like let's, let's just say, uh, we're, we're talking about people, right? And I have two people, they're chatter boxes, and when they get together, they're super duper chatter boxes. Am I going to put those two individuals together? Absolutely not, right? I may put one person over here, way on the west, and one person way over here on the east, so that we don't have that type of disruption in the classroom, right? So you have to think about our facility, left, uh, you know, layout, and that also holds true to, uh, to the workplace, right? You have individuals that say, hey, I can't put these two together because they like each other so much. And sometimes we can't put people together because they don't like each other so much. And that, that won't be a good thing. <clears throat> Let's go on to this. So I want you to review this. Uh, I won't go over it in detail, but it's typical layout design. So you have storage, uh, cutting to sampling, uh, deburring, uh, assembly, bending right so just taking you all the way through the process layout <clears throat> so i want you to review all of those on your own uh very very interesting 
uh, purchasing or otherwise known as procurement uh, is a function that serves or searches for high quality material resources, finds the best suppliers and negotiates for the best uh, price uh, for quality goods and services, right? So I'm going to say, you know, we need new copiers. Let's find the best price, but let's find it at good quality. That individual is going to be in charge of purchasing or procurement. <clears throat> Uh, just in time inventory, which is tough to do, very tough to do, easier said than done. Uh, it's a production process in which a minimum of inventory is kept on the premises and parts and supplies and other needs are delivered just in time to go on the assembly line. So just when we need it, here it comes. It's right there. We don't have a lot of stuff sitting in the inventory, sitting in the shelves, uh, which is a uh, you know, very progressive way of doing things. Sometimes it does not uh, work as planned, but, uh, but for the most part, it is the wave of future and the way that everybody's moving towards. Uh, quality. Quality is uh, consistently producing what the customer wants while reducing errors before and after uh, delivery to the customer. So meaning, hey, if you if you had Six Sigma class before, which I've had, 3.4 defects per 1 million. And what you want to do is you want to catch those 3.4 before they go out of the door because they're going to be coming back and asking you an establishment uh, for money. <clears throat> So there it is, uh, what I was just referring to, Six Sigma Quality, uh, which sets a benchmark of, of just 3.4 defects per million opportunities. Uh, so I'll tell you right now, if you ever have an opportunity or a chance to do Six Sigma and get a white belt, a green belt, or a black belt, I suggest that you do so. It'll open up your mind and expand your horizons in terms of you know different ways to look at things and ways to make your uh, your business and your business processes a lot more uh, a lot more effective, a lot more functional. Uh, and there it is right there. So be sure to read over it. Uh, but, uh, but Six Sigma is definitely a, a great thing. <clears throat> so these are just some of the process, statistical process control. Once you review those, review your test prep again. Uh, I think that's the third or fourth one uh, that you've seen, uh, at least in this chapter. Uh, the critical path. So this one, I do want you to review everything on this page, but I'm going to highlight on a couple things. Uh, oops, went too far. The critical path in a PERT network is a sequence of tasks that takes the longest time to complete, right? So the critical path, what, what would take the longest? If all the variables went the wrong way, what, what would happen? And that's the actual uh, critical path. And you don't want to be moving your, your project towards the, the critical path. Uh, the Gantt chart, you have to look that up and look up some examples. I'm sure you could find it, uh, you know, in your Microsoft Word or your Excel. Uh, but the Gantt chart bar graph shows production managers uh, what projects are being worked on and what stage they are in at any given time. It shows who the manager is, who the individual is responsible for it or the responsible party. And then it also uh, gives you a step by step one, two, three, four on uh, how you should be doing things. So <clears throat> that, that works out very well. And that's a, that's an example of it right there. So machine A, machine B, machine C, right? So some of them, you know, may overlap. Uh, in re reality, things do overlap. Uh, so <clears throat> you have to pay close attention to that. But uh, there are things that you can use uh, all the time. I think you have an Excel and Word and also in uh, uh, and Access. Uh, they, they have that as well for the, for the Gantt chart as well as the PERC chart as well. Uh, test prep, so be sure to go over to test prep as well as always. Uh, it will get you uh, prepared and ready for uh, for the next test, but you still need to get ready for the next test. Uh, for this week, you'll take a test on chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8. So here's a summary for chapter 9. Be sure to review it, go over it. Uh, make sure if there's anything that you don't understand from my standpoint, that you uh, ensure that, that you're clear on, on everything there. Uh, but be sure to go through the summary. Uh, it has some great things. Uh, it will help you, assist you. Trust me. Uh, you know, I was one of the ones who didn't always go through the summary before until I learned at about how much the, you know, how many answers were actually there and how helpful it, it was. Uh, so other than that, that's the end of chapter nine. Uh, I want you guys to have a good day and a great week. Don't forget to take your test, uh, your quizzes and anything else that, that is available and ready for chapter nine. So as always, as I said before, have a good day and a great week.